Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And the actual wrestling started and I was begging for more pantomime. Hmm. Like, Cody and Roman are really, really good. Jacob Fatu is awesome. Yep. Solo Sokoa should still be in NXT. And they got the heat and I describe this as infuriatingly dull. Like, it's so boring, I was angry, which yeah. it sounds better than boring. It's really not. It's really not. It goes on for a while. The crowd is dead silent. And finally, Cody has some cheerleading to build to a hot tag. And he's in their place going crazy. I'm like, all right, finally, we're done. And they cut him off. We're back to the Solo Sokoa show. And they're doing some stuff. And no one cares. And I still don't know what happened here. But uh, Cody and Jacob are doing something in the ring. And Solo like reached out to like pat him on the back and let him know he was doing good. And the ref says, tag! And no one moved for a while. And eventually, someone told Solo, just get in there and stomp him and tag Jacob back in. And that's what he did. So this is on for a bit. My Max is being noticed. Plug me in or I'm about to fall asleep. I'm like, fuck, I might fall asleep. There's a chant of Solo sucks in Atlanta, also in my apartment. You can't wrestle chance. Or you can't wrestle chance. So, Seems uh, harsh. Eventually, I mean, he. The, the, that's the Did problem. Did not watch that Nia Bailey match, for the fuck's sake? The problem is he can wrestle to like a baseline competence level. It would be more entertaining if he was worse. Then we could at least laugh at him. But he has nothing interesting in any way for minutes on end. So eventually, Roman gets a hot tag. The second half of this match is very good. Mm -hmm. It was uh, super intense stuff and interference at the right time and build to table spots, not just doing them out of nowhere. So places are going crazy. Uh, we have Roman has a... Uh, 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 Cody's trying to get Jacob to stay down. Jacob's gone through the barricade. He gets back up. Cody has a crossroads on the floor. He gets back up. So finally, Cody lays him across the announce desk, goes to the post, and puts him through the table with a splash. They're both out of the match now. It's down to Roman versus Solo. Roman wins a boxing match. He's about to go for the spear when the Gorillas of Destiny, or I believe they're just called the Tongans, yes. being how to distract. So uh, Solo gets a spear for an earfall. Roman kicks out, and Solo is bad-mouthing Roman. And the way the camera's set up, Roman's down on the ground. We're looking, like, at Solo's face, essentially. And behind him on the floor are the Tongans, also looking at us. And there is just a guy in between them. And somehow, I guess Solo has radar, like a bat. But he knows there's a third figure at ringside. And he turns his head and says, hey, who is that? And this masked figure then attacks the Tongans, lays them both out. It is Jimmy Uso, back for the first time since April. And Solo is distracted. They do some stuff. Roman has a spear and wins. Second half of this was very, very good. I thought it was your usual very good WWE main event. It's slow going early, but, you know, they want you to sit around for a while. So you get really excited for that stuff there at the end. You got to bring him down before you can bring him up, Vinny. Yeah. I thought that was what the 20 minutes in between matches was for. Well, they're not doing that as much lately. I had a lot of skipping in this. Well, I, I, did, I did too, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. I didn't and it still it. went long, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That uh, the WWE main event style sometimes is very monotonous and very boring. And if you put Roman in there, <laughs> Roman likes to take his time getting to the ring and take Oh, I skipped all that. Get... I skipped all of Cody, all of Roman. <laughs> Just get to the wrestling. Anyway, yeah, like you said, the second part of this match was good and it's almost comical that jacob fatu is so great and so over and the fans love him and solo's the guy that they're pushing yeah it's uh yeah. when he finally turns on solo it's going to be glorious so roman and jimmy hug roman was trying so hard to work up some tears i don't think he got any out but he's trying very very hard and came close cody and roman had a little stare down but nothing came of it. Roman and Jimmy just left. And then the Tongans attack Cody. And Jimmy and Roman are in the aisle. And Jimmy says, you gave your word you'd help. And Roman says, well, yeah, once. <laughs> I laughed at that. But they agree to make the save. And they clean house. Roman passes the belt back to Cody, acknowledging that he still wants this, but it's Cody's for now. And all seems right with the world. And then the Rock's music hits. Oh my god, this crowd. A yeah. thermonuclear reaction. <laughs> this crowd. If they went... bottled this audio energy, they can power the city of Atlanta for the rest of the decade. 
They it's, went nuts. Yeah. And he just came out and stood there. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say a thing. He didn't say a thing. They roared and screamed and cheered and, and frothing at the mouth. And he's just standing there. And eventually he counts to like one, two, three. And he leaves. They kind of booed him a little bit. They wanted him to do something. But uh, he's got also, I, should, I guess I should note, he has the Brahma bull belt. Yes. I don't know if we're defending that or not. But uh, presumably on Monday, or if not, then on Friday, we will learn more from this rock fella and what he thinks of the state of the WWE here in October of 2024. And uh, after the show, they showed this on social media. Yeah. Kevin Owens attacked Cody Rhodes in the parking lot. That was actually quite awesome. Because yeah. it's all shot in, shot in security footage. Mm -hmm. so no, it wasn't. It was shot by fans. Oh, really? They, Even they better. Did it, they, they did it in that area where fans, like, you know, they show up and, oh, this is where the wrestlers show up and leave. Right. So they always have a crowd of people there. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that's where code is. So every, all the footage you see are, like, fans on their cameras taking pictures of it. That's great. So That's it was. Better. It was actually. It was quite brilliant the way that they did it. Well, one fan deserves uh, some kind of career in this because he had an absolutely perfect angle. As mm -hmm. uh, they're having a conversation and it's heated, but it's purely verbal. And uh, Cody has the you know his big heavy championship belt on the ground, and Cody kind of says, "We're not getting anywhere. We'll just pick this up later." And he bends over to pick up his belt, and as he's bent over and his hands are full. That's when Kevin Owens decided to punch him right in the jaw. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so great. Now, I have a statement from Triple H. Oh, do you? Who just tweeted out, we were aware of the incident outside the arena last night. <laughs> we are aware of it? No shit. <laughs> you just became aware of it today, brother? It's busy. Where I'll were you yesterday? Over. He's got a belt to market. We are aware of the incident outside the arena last night between Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. The matter will be dealt with internally. Yeah. They're going to go nuts with this footage all week long. They're going to show 85,000 different angles. I mean, this was amazing. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I would say that this was a good enough show overall. Good main event, good finish, big surprise mm -hmm. with The Rock, awesome opener. Middle was the middle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it w this was the highs and lows of modern-day WWE. If you want to watch the show and... And and three hours and twenty minutes. I was not expecting that. About that. About that. One bad. I well, that's longer than it should have been. Yeah, dude. They, a lot of them go four hours. I mean, well, that's true. No, they've been going three lately, and that and less yeah. than three. So I, I was taken aback when it was longer. I thought the opener was one of my favorite matches I've seen all year. So the show is an automatic easy thumbs up. That's fair. There is nothing else I would take my time to watch. We did, in fact, by popular demand, watch Ready to Rumble. The champion is some fat loser. Yeah, he's a completely talentless, no athletic ability, can't wrestle, it, broke bum that walked out on his wife and kid. But he and was he's over. He's the world champion. He and was. In the he, movie, the well, yeah, but that's is, a microcosm of wrestling, sadly. Yes. He feels so bad about drinking this entire slushy that cost a dollar twenty six, and he he sticks his finger in his asshole, and. Walks up to the clerk. Lancey and, Lance is dying. How could the movie be so bad? I'm not going to fault the man for that, of all the things in the movie. I thought okay. for sure you were going to say you'd done this before. There's a reason I'm not going to fault the man for that. I, I just think with all the porta potties and farting in this, that I think Vince McMahon was a secret uh, producer on this film. Had to have been. So then we get the, the Shermanator. He's played a WCW arcade game. He uses some internet sleuthing to find the personal information of Jimmy King. He's searching the internet. Can to find out anything on here. This movie is so antiquated. Every Nitro Girl is in a Nitro Girl outfit. Except for this girl. And they had they her dance in something to totally out, different. Brian, like the captain. So we're so stupid. I got it. Captain yes, Stabbing? Yes, if you're watching this film, you're that stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I was also insulted by the fact they hired Michael Buffer to announce the Royal Bash, the fake-ass Royal Bash. $24 million budget. Wow. And probably 500000 of that went to Michael Buffer. It made twelve. You know, we he should unveils. mention, this This cage match is the triple-decker cage of doom. Everybody buried it. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. And, uh, and so they decided to make a movie. 
And what is the final battle? It's another goddamn triple decker cage match. This would be like in in 2010 if like TNA made a movie and the final the final match was a reverse battle royal. They throw powder in someone's face, DDP's I think or somebody's, and the dude just looks and goes, "It doesn't work." And it's like, of course, because wrestling's fake and stupid. Should we just end it there? What a, what a sound bite. There has never been a movie I have watched in my entire life which has made me hate myself more. Wow. I'm ashamed that I'm even in the place at 41 years old where I would end up reviewing this movie for money. I would have thought I would have made it out of here by now. You know what I mean? I'm done. Well, everyone, hopefully we can do this again someday. Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe.